The Presidential Election Petition Court, PEPC, on Monday held its inaugural session, a legal ritual that precedes the actual hearing of petitions seeking to nullify the outcome of the 2023 presidential election. Now, at the session, a five-member panel of justices of the Court of Appeal uh, that will hear and determine all the five petitions challenging the declaration of Bola Tinubu of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, as the winner of the presidential election were revealed. Whereas the panel will be headed by the presiding justice of the Abuja Division of the Court of Appeal, Justice Haruna Samani, and other members of the panel are Justice Stephen Ada, Asaba Division, Justice Monsurat Bolaji Yusuf, Asaba Division, Justice um, Bolu Kromo Ugo, uh, Kano Division, as well as Justice Abba Mohammed of the Badon Division. Now, in his opening remarks, the president, uh, the presiding justice, um, urged lawyers representing all petitioners to avoid sensational comments, stressing that the court would not tolerate time-wasting tactics and technicalities. Well, joining us to discuss the, the said technicalities is uh, Barista Obinna Chik, who is a legal practitioner. Good evening, uh, Barista Obinna. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, Marianne. Great. Thank you for having me. Yes. I explain to the layman what you mean, or what the court or the panel meant by technicalities. Um, of course, we know about the sensational statements, but what are the technicalities that they would not be considering um, in this uh, particular proceedings? Okay. Um, I am, uh, technicality referred to by the, by the justices of the presidential uh, tri election tribunal what that simply means is that the court will not will not base its judgment or will not allow for kind of uh, reliance on misstep or reliance or a failure to follow a particular procedure prescribed by law so what the court is indirectly saying is that the court will hear the matter based on its merit, based on its merit. And the court will not allow for filing of uh, applications in court, maybe owing to or due to a uh, failure on either of the parties to have followed a particular procedure prescribed by law. Uh, what you find in the normal court proceeding is that uh, if uh, the other party fails to fails to file a particular thing or follow a particular procedure, the lawyer on the other side will either file a preliminary objection or uh, uh, raising the issue of jurisdiction that the court does not have jurisdiction based on that failure. But in this instance, the court, uh, the tribunal has said that. All that the tribunal wants to do or, and will do will be to hear the petition, the presidential election petition, based on its merit. I think that is a welcome development. It goes to show that the tribunal, this time around, is ready to deal with the main issue, hear the matter based on its merit. Mm. Um, we've, we've seen tribunals like this also um, in previous elections who have also made statements like this of looking at the cases based on merit. But again, looking at the time that we're in, uh, that Nigerians have um, some post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, from the elections and previous elections that we've had. What do you think will be a game changer uh, or what do you think um, this tribunal has that would one way or the other assure the average Nigerian that there's going to be, um, you know, um, some level of trust for the judiciary, also knowing that there's a trust deficit between Nigerians and the judiciary? I think going from the few, uh, the few statements made by the court, I think the court is, uh, is uh, towing a right direction. But again, uh, Nigerians uh, are kind of the background of uh, uh, previous uh, decisions of the tribunal and the court with the Nigerians felt uh, didn't go uh, down or didn't uh, come, didn't resonate with what the, the thinking of Nigeria. But I think looking at the few statements that have been made, 
I think the tribunal is towing the right direction. But for me, personally, the only one that I did not like or I, I will not support, or uh, of course my support will not change anything, but the only one I didn't like is, is the decision of the court not to allow not to allow the the uh, proceedings to be aired live on television. That's the only area that I... I was actually like. about to ask because that because many Nigerians were hopeful that they would they would bring um, you know some form of leveler it was you know that access into the courtroom, even though that's not generally been our proceeding or the modus operandi. Um, many had thought that at least for once this would be the case. Uh, why do you think that the, maybe the court decided or the tribunal decided to take this position? Okay, um, I, I think that uh, the court decided to take this position maybe because of the tension, tension in the country. If the court decides to allow for live viewing of the, of the proceedings, there is a likelihood that people... Nigerians may interpret or may see a, a, a particular incident or incidences that will occur during trial or during the proceedings to mean being by, by us. I think they could want to be free to, to uh, either correct or do the right thing. I think that's what the court wants to do. But uh, to me as a person, I would have thought and my thought and belief is I would have been that this, uh, considering the way things are in the country, it would be nice to uh, the, to allow the uh, presidential election tribunal, presidential election tribunal to be aired uh, like. Mm. Let's talk about the role of INEC in all of this because um, many of these petitions are against INEC and, and you and I were here what, during the elections with the issues with the upload of results and um, some of the behavior of INEC officials and some, certain things that happened in different areas across the country. Um, INEC of course through its lawyer had um, during that session said that, um, that they, they had confidence that the, they will be able to work in consonance with the tribunal to bring justice to all the petitions that are before it. Um, but again, do you see um, INEC being as plain as possible, being that there's also been allegations that some of the results that have been uploaded to INEC's portal does not um, park, you know, is not the same as the results that were gotten at the polling units. So these are some of the issues that will be raised. Um, what is the sincerity level that you presume INEC will bring to this particular hearing? Okay, I, I, I think uh, the, uh, everything or anything that has to do with uh, uploading of reports on IRES and uh, the intricacies of uh, the election, uh, it will not be nice to discuss that is because it's already subject. Yeah. It's already before the court. I mean, it's one of the things that the court will decide. It will be the position of the court to decide whether or not a result not uploaded as I have uh, should be discounted as we, or should be allowed to form part of the election. But all I will tell my students will be, let's wait and see. Let's see uh, what the tribunal, the tribunal will do. I am hopeful that the tribunal will do the right thing. Finally, um, Vice Obina, uh, there's never been a precedence in this country where a tribunal unsat a presidential candidate, candidate for no reason, or for any reason um, to talk of. Um, so... What, are we, what should we be expecting? I'm not saying that we should preempt, of course, the tribunal, uh, but looking at the antecedents of all these tribunals that we've had, um, election tribunals, um, should we be hoping upon a star, or is it going to be business as usual? I think, I think, I think a day begins a, day begins a story. A, a, a day begins a story. Uh, let us hope and see. I want to believe, and I am very sure that this, the judiciary will put with an outcome. Every Nigerian, every Nigerian 
run out of let's go let's let's go that the uh, uh, judiciary was to be right and uh, even though uh, uh, we and citizens have shown that tribunal or the, the court uh, uh, have never decided to or upon president but like i said it will be given let us begin to let us watch and see we are confident that the judiciary will not be wrong we apologize for that break, uh, but this is where we say our goodbyes. Uh, apologies to our guest. Barry Sobina is a legal practitioner, and he was speaking to us uh, live from Lagos. My name is Mary Anna Cole, and that's the show tonight. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.